Wednesday, 20, Wednesday, 20th August, we're starting again, and I promise you, if it takes me 24 hours to do this video tonight, we're doing this video. So they could block, they could jam, they could cut, they could disconnect, they could do their worst. Everything I have to get to give you, you're getting tonight. Do yourself a favor, do the nation a favor, share this video. We're going to do it tonight. We're going to have the conversation. The name of the video is Seeing Past the Bullshit. Let us get everybody properly informed. There have a lot of stuff to discuss, eh? a lot of what's going on. Hey, man, I am going to, if you can give me the numbers quick, we gotta play no music. So share it up fast, share it up fast. We'll, we'll take a short song for a minute, share it up fast. Let me get the numbers up. <laughs> Yes, I'm all in time. Figgy here again. So this morning I was reading the internal letter that circulated in the Petrochen where the government intend to do because Petrochen $12 billion in debt and they will continue to lose about $2 billion. Of course they will continue to lose money like when the Prime Minister partner and them taking the company half a billion dollars for something that they never actually received. Jail for all of them, you know. Vote yourself a real government. Vote yourself a government that will bring Rowley and Kamala and the band of them before the courts, you know. Anyway. I just want the instance, you know, eh? But only I want to think back on that Patrick Manning, this $12 billion we need hold. And Manning. Manning escape. Manning escape. This is a country. Listen, even, even in the grave, I want to follow them sons of bitches. Malcolm Jones and Manning and Julia. Boy, they raped this freaking country, boy. We lost that money. Remember, everybody advised him, don't buy that old Ventec plant and bring it here because it will never work. Look, they're going to spend two billion more on it again. Because one of the financiers from a company in America come down here. 
And watch me. We need this information in the public space. They're playing, they're playing, and they're using the courts to prevent you from speaking. But at some point, all over wake up, you know. At some point, all of Trinidad and Tobago are going to wake up. We in Tulsi don't come on my wall and talk no bullshit about no unstoppable one percent. Eh? I'll block you so fast you wouldn't know if you was coming or going. The unstoppable ninety-nine percent. That's who we're talking to. One point four million of us, and it is us to stand up now and defend this country. They said no done deal, you know. Let me tell you something. We could reverse the sale of Karani. We can go back and undo the sale of Karani Limited. We can go back through every state deal that those two parties, PNM and UNC, do. Bring them before the courts. Seize the properties. You see that? You see all that bullshit that's going on down in Chagaramas? The only reason it is stopping is because PNM and UNC eat it from the same trough. All them financiers who do that land grab in Chagaramas vote for a progressive empowerment party now. See if everything that they ain't gone. Anyway, let me continue this. We planned for 40 million dollars or something, so some small money after the country done lost 12 billion dollars on it. And that is the same thing that happened to the refinery. Yeah? Them fellas really selling all this so that somebody, one of the financiers, will come and say, Well, we go buy the refinery for small money. That's the play. Shock doctrine. Shock doctrine. Hey, what? Eh? You go by the mechanic to fix your car. The mechanic tell you, boy, you see this car? It leaking oil, the rods bend, you can't, the thing, thing start to fix it, you might have to spend a $30,000 just to bring back that engine and the rest. From the time you do that, you might as well spend the $20,000 for the electrical. Me, in your shoes, I throw this car away. I'll give you $5,000 for it now if you want. You give the man five, you take the man $5,000, you sell him your car, tomorrow it out in town pulling bull. Trinidadians, don't take chain up. Petrotrain is not a losing pep proposition. Petrotrain is losing money deliberately. We're going to deal with that. Hello, 40 million, 50 million. Are we going to employ the people and them on that small money again? We... we spent, we spent $5 billion on the Malcolm Jones buying a failed gas to liquid plant that they knew was going to fail, that they now sell to the partners and them. Ministers and senators who went and form a company and buy back the same thing that they approved when they was in government, in parliament, and senate. This is the madness in Trinidad and Tobago. These people have real jail to make, but it's not going to happen if you keep voting red and ready and yellow and unsteady. Because if you keep voting the beneficiaries of the TIFIN, who going to stop it? Because so far, everything them. The private sector Carol, take over. It's so. running more efficient, but it's just no, it just so. pay the workers and them as they're really supposed to be in that. that. Now, the workers and them being used, eh? the workers and them being used as skateboards, and all you're following this jackass Ansel Roger all over town. Ansel Roger pocket fat, you know. All this stunty stunting, they are rest and reflection. Miss me with your bullshit, brother. Shut the country down tonight. You're not serious. You don't sell out the people and sell out the country. And this is your little stunt so that the people don't really see you for what you are. I know what's going on here. Trinidad and Tobago in trouble because everybody who involved in the highest levels of everything to do with Petrotrin connived and conspired against the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Oil and gas industry. So think back, people. Petrochin, we lost that to a billion on that project mine, 300 million on our office building. That Ventec project alone was 12 billion dollars. They spent 300 million dollars to build a building. The steel frame went up and dies it. Every time, every time you're driving south and coming back from south, you had a pass. That building, that alone is reason to jail that entire PNM government. Jail people who still, who now looking to join PNM, jail them too. Jail them and all. The PNM have committed a crime against this country. 56 years running. Even when other parties was in government, PNM was thiefing money in this country. It is time to elect a government. Kamala and them too weak. Kamala and Munilal and them too blasted weak. I said a shit talk. I said a bacchanal and noise. Vote a government into office that could bring these bandits to justice. Should you warn us? We win back some of the money. Then we have about three plants inside it that's still not operating as yet. That's Samsung, which I work on. Some of that, some of them other plants, and then I can't remember which is the next one in startup as yet. But it's under the PLM government that Petrochrin end up in this state. Now them with the decisions and the party people and them. All that he said is a fact, but I want to tell you something. 
Kamla could have fixed things when she was there. She put Gillette, and Gillette know what he do. Gillette know what they do. Nothing fix, nothing change. Nothing fix, nothing change. You have more to hear, you know. What is amazing is that the taxpayers have invested over $10 billion over the past decade to upgrade and modernize the refinery. Such state-of-the-art projects, including an acid plant, the alkylation plant, the continuous catalytic reformer, and catalytic crack cracker upgrade. Additionally, Petrotrin, using taxpayers' money, spent $300 million to build a new state-of-the-art refinery laboratory. Against that massive investment, you see, I have some friends who defend in this bullshit about Petrotrin is a drain on the economy. I come into them, you know, and I call them the name tonight because they're eating and they think that I ain't watching what they're eating is why the country in trouble. But wait, against the massive investment, we are now being told that the refinery will be closed and over 1,700 will be rendered jobless. The government boasted in several budget debates that they were going to increase oil exploration. In fact, only last year, officials from Petrotrin journeyed to the new kid on the block oil producer Guyana and announced with fanfare that the Petrotrin refinery is open for business to refine Guyanese oil. In light of the above, we await news that PNM Patriots will intervene to buy the refinery and save the day by paying a pittance on the $10 billion for the entire state-of-the-art modernized facility. The backroom players are at work. This will explain the deliberate policy of industrial vandalism between 2015 to this time by allowing a halt to Petrotrin co-activities. It is worth repeating that the Petrotrin debt is primarily, primarily as a result of the vanity projects and corruption during the infamous Malcolm Jones, Ken Julian reign. It is wicked to ask the workers and the people of Trinidad and Tobago to pay the ultimate price for the misdeeds of these PNM operators. And I say it, and I've been very, very pellucidly clear. This next jackass, Espine. I want you to read, I want you to hear what Espine is here. The Petrotrin Board, the Petrotrin Board of Directors met on 2018. Chairman Wilfred Espine said, with the termination of the refining operations, I want to give you the whole thing you need. Eh? Petrotrin has lost a total of about $8 billion in the last five years, is $12 billion in debt, and owes the government of Trinidad and Tobago more than $3 billion in taxes and royalties. Stick up in right there. We own Petrotrin right off that. So that off the books. $3 billion gone. Write it off. Because I'm telling you, we have to write it off. Jail them sons of bitches. The entire board and everybody who failed in their fiduciary responsibility, there is justice for that. But write off the $3 billion royalty. Do not bullshit me. Do not say left pocket or right pocket. Write that shit off because it's your cause it. The company currently requires a cash injection of $25 billion to stay alive. Bullshit. To refresh its infrastructure and to repay its debt. Bullshit. And even with that, is left as is, it is projected to continue losing about $2 billion a year. More bullshit. Chairman Wilfred Espine said, and I'll tell you why it's bullshit now. Chairman Wilfred Espine said, with the termination of the refining operations and the redesign of exploration and production, Petrotrin will now be able to independently finance all of its debt and become a sustainable business. Bullshit. You are going to take Trinidad oil, sell it to the one percenters who are going to buy the refinery so that we will buy back our gas and diesel and aviation fuel from them for astronomical profits. You're bullshitting the nation. Nobody will buy Petrotrin if Petrotrin was worthless. I want to tell you something. They don't know nothing that you don't know. So anything that you think that they will do to restructure the company, you do that. You're already ready to lay off 1,700 people. Lay them to shut off. And let us start it over. Let us actually run the country properly and run that company properly. But Trinidad and Tobago, we too blasted stupid because we played, we played Indian African politics and separated the nation while, while these jackasses, none of which look like all you, running away with the fat of the freaking land. Running away with the fat of the land. Crime, poverty, hopelessness. Homelessness 
is the legacy of this PNM government. It is time to stop them. I tell you all, you know, the Rahal regime under Manning that shut down Karani, it is time to reverse that. I want to tell you this. A progressive empowerment party government will restart Karani Limited. And you see, if you want there to be a URP and a CPEC, we will split the money half-half. We're mining the whole country if we're mining. Half a CPEP URP, half a Karani. And try to bring all of them to reconcile and rationalize and balance the budget. But don't bullshit the nation and be telling them we could lose $2 billion a year when you have amalgamated security driving prisoners all over the country for inflated $100 million contract that you could cancel and rent a building next to the jail and put the magistrate there and the the, the prisoners can walk outside into the court. Justice really on time. Rain or sun or snow is stopping that. All that bullshit in the nation. I will show Trinidad and Tobago tonight. There are many ways to save that $2 billion. And Willie Espany and all, he and all have a jail to make. Because, and you ought to hear this. You ought to hear this. State oil company Petrotrain has recorded an after-tax profit of $85.6 million for the quarter ended June 30th. 2018. This compared to a loss of 517.5 million in the previous quarter. Petrochem chairman Wilfred Espinay, where did we hear that name before? In published financial statements, attributed the improved financial results to cost reduction initiative undertaken by the interim executive team in stall of March this year. So the jackass knows that there are ways to right size the company. But which is it? Is it a losing proposition, as has been told the nation on August 28th? Or 2018, or is it a profit as has been told the nation in June 30th, 2018? Which is it? Which is it, brother? Tell the nation and come straight. Hear this exotic bullshit. This is not normal. We get normal bullshit in Trinidad. Some soft and runny, some hard and lumpy, and depending on who gave it to you and what the purpose of it is. But this this is exotic bullshit. This is bullshit that comes with hibiscus flowers and umbrellas. Hear this! Petrochin is no longer producing enough oil to operate a pointer pair refinery efficiently. So, you son of a bitch, separate the two into two companies. That is the plan that you're trying to do right now to enrich one percenters. Do it for the people of Trinidad and Tobago because that is what you're there for. That is why you have that job. And any monkey with a degree could do it. So if you can't do it, vacate the office. Every freaking one of you. Petrochin is, this is the exotic bullshit they want you to hold. Petrochin is no longer producing enough oil to operate the point up here refinery efficiently. We are producing approximately 40,000 barrels of oil a day. And the refinery operates at a capacity of 140,000 barrels a day. So we have to go to the market, hear the bullshit, to buy about 100,000 barrels of oil to make up the shortfall. This results in a net loss in foreign exchange bullshit. Because we don't have to go to the market for 100,000. Listen, if all we need is the oil to break even at the operating cost, we can refine Guyanese oil. You're over there dancing and, and whining with Maduro. Maduro has so much oil. Venezuela has... Jerome Mitchell asked me, what is my crime plan? Brother, my crime plan is to lock up the whole PNM. Somebody tell me, talk about the leaders of the party, not the party. Bullshit. PNM people keep voting that shit into office and cutting all of our throat. PNM people to blame. I'm telling all of that tonight. PNM people to blast it, strip it to continue falling for that foolishness year after year after year. Election after election after election. There's come and lie to you and tell you they're going to gear roads. Where the freaking bitch? Where the pitch? Where the money from the pitch lake? You all want to sit down on him or Ranky soon show on Fazir Mohammed show and play who could pick fleas off of each other back better. I am telling Trinidad and Tobago, when I posted on Facebook in January that this was coming eight months later to the letter as broken down it came. When I told Trinidad what was about to happen with the super fast Galatia, a month later, they terminated the contract. As said, the entire playbook dismantled the Port Authority Board, gave the cabinet the authority to go and thief money straight from the freaking treasury. And that's what they're doing. And all you're sitting down there with your vote and your red finger, thinking that somehow it's somebody else to blame. Tell me something, the man, Trinidad and Tobago. When this Titanic slam into that iceberg and all you start to drum, do not, do not look to blame anybody but yourself. 
do me a favor, invest in one of them little pocket mirror that you can put in your pocket for when the shit hit the fan, look in the mirror and thank yourself. Because it is we, the voters, that are responsible for doing this shit to the country. The man who just came on my wall to ask me what's my crime plan, like a rising tide, the Progressive Empowerment Party will lift all boats. We will ensure that from the bottom up, not the top down, the one percent can kiss my half red ass and I know they love to hear that I say that and I say it again because unlike the rest of these political charlatans, I don't care if you vote for me or not. My job, and I will sleep well every night knowing I have informed, educated, and empowered the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Knowledge is power. It liberates. It emancipates. Black people learning to read is what ended slavery. It is time that we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, took responsibility for the bullshit of this country and made proper choices. Because if you don't, if you are a woman living with a man who is beating you and the door don't have a lock or you have a key, is you to blame by your choice. Let me stop the bullshit. Let me see past it now. Trinidad and Tobago needs to take responsibility for itself. I am saying to Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, because you're done flouting the United States sanction against Venezuela. So you don't care. You're taking pictures of you and Maduro doing the conga line. This jackass. This absolute stunting jackass went Venezuela to do the conga line with Maduro. So you're showing the world you don't give a care about Uncle Trump. No problem. But if you don't give a care about Uncle Trump, Venezuela discards more oil in a day than we produce deliberately in a year. Venezuela loses oil in a day more than we produce in a year. So if you and Maduro is friends, and Maduro need toilet paper and corned beef and salt fish for his people. Why are we not deal, doing a deal that everything that we can grow or manufacture in Trinidad and Tobago, we will barter with you for oil? Because all we want is to get our refinery up to capacity until Guyana get the oil out of the ground because the closest destination to Guyana for refining is Trinidad and Tobago. They ain't going to Venezuela because Venezuela and Guyana are almost ready to go to war over oil and mining rights. So Guyana cannot go to Venezuela, but Guyana could come here. Guyana could come here and guess what? Guess what? We have an excess 100,000 barrel a day capacity. So mothball the refinery that we just spent $12 million on, stick a pin and wait. How long is it going to take? Let's ask Guyana. How long is it going to take for you to get your oil on the ground? We will refine it for you. We will refine it for you on a cost plus model. Just to keep our refinery working and our people getting paid. Because we have to pay down a 12 billion debt that members of our government stole from the people of Trinidad and Tobago. So we need your help. Wilfred Espinay is a PNM stooge and his job is to sit there and convincingly lie to the people. But he's an old man and I think that these people found out they had no God. They found out somewhere they had no God because these people are taking chances. They're taking big, big chances because if you die and find out that there is a God, partner, somebody has to answer for the actions of your life. If you are knowingly lying to the people of Trinidad and Tobago and telling them that Petrotrin cannot right size, knowing that there are buyers waiting in the wings that want to buy it to do precisely that, you're a liar and a thief and you should go to hell. You should go to hell and join up with Manning and Malcolm Jones and the rest of the bandits and the PLM and the UNC. I wish all of you all go to hell. I hope every single one, I hope some go in hell. I don't want none of these people to get a blessing in life. Trinidad Tobago has been reduced to a shell of this country, what it should have been TN Ramnat. These fellas, I, listen, I'm telling you, karma is a real thing. Take your just reward. Take your just reward. You whine on people back. You abuse public office. You took advantage of the people's trust. I wish you nothing but an eternity of torment. Trinidad Tobago could be a blessed nation a most blessed paradise on earth. But we have bullshit artists up in top public offices and all you're afraid to fire them. But I will fire every single one. Pink slips, we will run out of pink paper in this country. Vote me into office and I will show you how you clean house in this place. Petrotrin could functionally run. I tell you something. Bring a management team from Texas, Houston. Drop them in Petrotrin and tell them, here what? 10% of the net is yours. So if you clear a billion dollars profit this year, besides your salary, your bonus, 
is a hundred million dollars because I believe half a loaf is better than none. I would like to get proper first world attorneys disconnected from the corrupt contractocracy that is Trinidad and Tobago and real forensic accountants form them into a company and give them a deal. Go and collect, go and find and collect all the money stolen from this country since 1962 and everything you bring back, keep half. Keep half. I want, if you, if you get all four towers that Johnny O'Halloran stole in Canada, keep two. We only want back two. Because half a loaf is better than none. But you voted criminals into office to replace criminals in office, that you voted into office to replace criminals in office, that you voted into office to remove criminals from office, that you voted into office to remove criminals from office. So what you've been playing is a choice of criminals. And that has not helped this nation at any level, in any way, at any time, across the 56 years of our existence. In two days, we celebrate our first Dependence Day. This is not independent. Trinidad and Tobago is no longer independent. We are in a hole, we are in debt that we will never come out of. And this government, and the last one to some extent, are to blame. If you want a better Trinidad and Tobago, you cannot continue to vote the abusers that did this to our country back into office. Freeze all the assets. Sal's Jaggi side going way further than freezing the assets. Trinidad and Tobago must set an example to the world. Corruption and should be treason and it should be punishable by death. The kind of corruption that took place in this country, the world must see after due process and conviction hang their ass in Independence Square. The people must see that there is a government that is capable. And I know some of you don't want to hear that. All your, all your heart's strong and weak because you have to decide. You have to decide. There have been ministers and members of parliament who swore oath to cut your throat. They have unified and gathered together across the divide. PNM and UNC and the entire oligarchy and contractocracy plundered and pillaged this nation. I told you on Tobago on the radio, if a million seconds is 11 days and a billion seconds is 31 years, 3 trillion seconds is 93,000 years. If we spent a dollar a second since the moment the Union Jack came down, we would have spent a dollar a second for the next 93,000 years to come. We already spent our money. And if you have no idea what the concept of time is, 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ was still walking around. 10,000 years ago, they didn't have no pyramids on this planet. And 50,000 years before that, man didn't exist. So look at what we have done. We have squandered every hope and blessing and chance this country ever had. Let's look at this. The refining of oil will be phased out and the company will import the refined products, gasoline, diesel, aviation fuels, etc. that the country needs approximately 25,000 barrels of oil equivalent a day. All the company's oil will be exported. Now you tell me. You've sent a jackass government to destroy the country's patrimony. It is time to wake up. PNM people, talk to me. Come on the wall, I'm blocking you. PNM people, come and defend it. Come and defend it. Let me talk. Let me talk a little bit, right? We spent $17 billion in the last two years for 1,000 people to get murdered. That's just national security. 17 billion. I'm telling you, the 2 billion that we need to keep petrochemical afloat, take it from national security. It don't cost me nothing. How much more people go dead? How much more go dead? Do you divide 17 billion by 1,000 or 1,000 by 17 billion to work out what is the cost per murder in this country by our failing national security? Work that out. Because if we take 2 billion from national security and give it to Petrotrain, at least we will keep 2,500 people gainfully employed. But if you don't want to do that, if you say no, 1,000 people getting murdered every year is our limit, then take it from education. Take it from the Ministry of Education. We spend $5 billion a year on education, but only half of our children get to graduate. So we're paying $2.5 billion for 50, for how much? 10,000 children to fail every year. Every year we pay two and a half billion dollars for 10,000 children to fail. Rather than that, just go put them in the school, take that money and send it to Petrochem. Let them go and apply for a job in Petrochem. Because two and a half billion dollars covers the cost of Petrochem and it saves those children wasting time going into school. You can do porn and fight violence home by you. You don't have to come to school, you're causing traffic. 
Half of them could stay home because the education system failed in them. Yeah? Or, if you say, if you say, we want our functional illiterates certified, no problem. Take me $2 billion from the Ministry of Health. We spend $5 billion every year on the Ministry of Health for people to get no beds. Take $2 billion from that and let everybody walk with a sheet and sleep on the floor. We don't, we don't care get service, we don't care get medicine, we can't get a bed, we can't get a doctor, we can't get a phone answered. What are we spending the five billion for? And what more can we lose if we took two billion dollars out of the Ministry of Health? What else could we not get? What? What will they do? What will they lose? Toilet paper? They don't have that now. Toilet? I don't think they're working. What will Trinidad and Tobago lose if we took out of the five billion dollars? that we spend on the Ministry of Health every year, if we took two billion out, what would we lose? What would we lose? Not one ass. That is just two billion dollars going straight to the one percent, to divide with them, the oligarchs, the ministers, the corrupt lawyers, the corrupt accountants, and all of them sitting down clinking glass and fancy organizations being built in one Woodbrook place on your money. In your place, left pocket, right pocket. Your $25 billion bail out, bail out one Woodbrook place for the same blasted thieves that stole the money to go and build restaurant, bar, and discotheque to entertain themselves and their friends. On your money. This is a country where the government, under the guise of collecting from poor people a health deduction to go towards a national insurance scheme, took that money and gave it to friends to build a discotheque around the Savannah. Siam Nightclub was built on poor people, health contribution. That is this country. That is Trinidad and Tobago. What else in the budget exists that you could take, take it from Wasa? Take the whole $2 billion from Wasa. I'm going to tell you something. Eh? What's going on in Petrotrain, going on in Wasa, going on in TCL, going on in B-Mobile? Listen, you could take it from anywhere. You know? All you're taking is thief money. It's thief money wherever it is. And if you don't believe me, explain to yourself, not me, forget me. Explain to yourself. Go and sit down in a corner in your house and say, that man Philip lying. My government not so nasty. When we spend $60 billion a year, we spend it on something. What is that something? Tell yourself. Don't tell me. Tell yourself. Convince yourself that your government is not robbing you. Convince yourself that your government is not a criminal enterprise using your vote and your trust to rob you and your children and your children's children to make life as difficult as they could for you. This is a country that suffered a recession during the year when the entire world economy grew 3.5%. Only this third world, shithole, cesspool, failed nation, banana republic, narco state, had a recession. The rest of the world was bubbling. Grenada passed away. Guyana passed away. Jamaica to say, but at least we ain't Trinidad and Tobago. Come now, man. PNM people are talking to all you tonight. What you just tell yourself? What you just tell yourself? I'm talking to the people of Mova, Beaton, Lavantil, Silots, La Hoqueta, Talparo, Enterprise, Embarcadere, are talking to River Estate, Patna, Bagatelle, Rich Plain, Coveen, La Puerta, Mason, Factory Road, are talking to the people of Sanganga, Abi Pujad, Big Yard, Scorpion, Caranage, are talking to the people of every single HDC from Powder Magazine to Shaconia, are talking to the people of Never Dirty, Cocorit, Waterhole, Hard in Place, I'm talking to the people of Gonzales, Belmont. What do you tell yourself when you look around at the squalor you live in? How do you reconcile your life and your vote in this country that has made people so wealthy that we have on this little two by four island, Rolls Royce and Ferrari, and houses that would make people who star on the lifestyles of rich and famous blush. How do you reconcile it? Because do you tell yourself, I stupid and them smart? How to be? How to be? Because anything else borders on racism. Anything else sounds like my kind of people and make to get the 
That's how it sounds. That's how it sounds. PNM people talk to me tonight. Talk to me. They, they, you know what they come in to do here? Yeah? They come in to gear a free fet. Independence. Come and wind down low, broke out, kick back, come get drunk on we. Come. We're gonna piss on your back and tell your rain falling, but we don't want you sober. We want you drunk. When you're drunk, you will take it. You will take it. If Trinidadian people, especially PNM people, had an ounce of self-respect, that stunting event should bust. Rowley should stand up inside of there with his band of never-do-wells and malcontents and realize that he has woken up a different day in Trinidad and Tobago. Let Fitzgerald Hines come there still ringing canal water out in Pump City Ras. Let all of them stand up in that empty car park and realize that they have no division in Trinidad and Tobago anymore. That the 99% sees past your bullshit. That the people are standing together. And Sita, don't ever write on my wall they like it so if you ever want to see this wall again. We do not discriminate. Trinidadians have been disadvantaged by the PNM and the UNC and every version of those two bullshit puppet parties for all of our 56 years. This is a nation broken by deliberate design. 56 years, five years at a time, we get reamed out, plundered, pillaged, abused, advantaged. This is a country where people have such shallow and do care for the rest of their brothers and sisters that they will stop their fridge with ill-gotten gains and do care if your children care it. That is this Trinidad and Tobago. So when, so when Valdez and Tory and Ross Advertising and McCann Erickson and Lonsdale Sachi and Sachi want to make all them fancy ads for you and tell you the Ganges meet the Nile, tell them miss me with that bullshit. Eh? This is Trinidad and Tobago. Here, this in this place, advantage is what we do. Once upon a time there was a magic island for the magic people Let me tell you a story About their pain and their glory Oh yeah Many rivers come To this naked island Bringing fear and pain But also a brand new style And of all these rivers That share this land One lovely nation under a group drunk at carnival for two days or two weeks. We're gonna do that. We're gonna take a wine forward and a wine back and a chuck. That what we for. We drunk and we high and we stoned and we outside here looking to pick up and fling we frame and all the bullshit we talk. And then to shuffle back home and we fail in clothes to we fail in house and we catch our community with no water in the pipe and half empty fridge because you can't even afford food. Trinidad and Tobago, the most blessed nation on planet Earth, cursed by a stupid people willing to vote criminals into office and line up like sheep to celebrate them cutting your throat. How do we come out of this, Anne? We come out of this, I am not the only one with brain. I am not the only one with sense. I am not the only one with eyes. And we come out of this by each and every one of you standing up and speaking out. We come out of this by all of us being willing to stand up and to make a better country for ourselves. The people most likely to attack me, children failing in school. 
The people most likely to attack me, hiding the car from the bailiff because they can't pay the, the installment. And General Finance, Island Finance, and Scotia Bank looking for them. The people most likely to attack me, the street they're living in, had no pavement. Never had one. Or if it have one, it mash up. The manhole cover's missing. So if you're blind and you're walking down the road, you could end up blind with a broken leg. The people most likely to attack me still living in communities where house hanging off the side of the hill and nobody give a shit. The last earthquake pass could have take you. Nobody care. The people most likely to attack me have never had water, will never have a legal electrical connection and surviving on a 10 days and a handout and have to go and smile and laugh with some jackass because he own you. You're pretending the money in your pocket is yours. But if you don't go and laugh and hope and try and beg, you have no money to get because you're not entitled to that hustle work. And the man who's handing out the jobs at the end of the day, if he don't like you for any reason, dog eat your supper. All of this is true. And all you know that, and I listen, eh? saying that, I also want to say, to the PNM people watching this video, you all have all the power in this country. When Nylon Hippolyte was the member of parliament for Lavantel West, I told Nylon Hippolyte, marginalize Lavantel, marginalize it. Let UNC or whoever else, TOP, wherever, come and do big rally. Let PNM feel they could lose it because man don't buy flowers for woman he taken for granted. And no political party or government doing shit all for any constituency that they don't have to fight to win. Not one. Go factory road in Dego Martin, where the member of parliament for 31 years is Keith Rowley, your current prime minister. Go Glencoe. Glencoe had no water for two weeks. Two weeks, no water. The prime minister used to live Newberry Hill, Glencoe. He is the member of parliament for that constituency, 31 years now. Diego Martin, and I want you to understand this. Diego Martin gets more rainfall than any other constituency in the entire country. Diego Martin has so much rain for the rainy season. We didn't get rain in the dry season, but Diego Martin has so much rain in the rainy season. And we have enough space to store that water. We get enough rain in one rainy season to properly provide water for all the people of Dago Martin for 20 years and more. But these sons of bitches, rather than do anything to help our people, prefer to keep them living in squalor and desperation because stupid, foolish people will take whatever they get and watch others make off with theirs and do find the strength to stand up and hold that weapon and say, Massa, enough. Enough. Can't take a next lash. I can't take a next lash, master. I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't sit down home here with my girl child and fight for 16 years and all she bring out of that secondary failed school is a big belly. I can't take it, master. I can't take again. Master, I can't take. Every time they say, oh good, somebody, the truck just get shoot. I had to sit down and hold my heart and hold my belly and hope it ain't my child. Massa, I can't take a next lash. I can't take it. I wake up this morning and courts outside. You want to take the TNT money to go and pay courts and TNT come and cut the lights. Massa, I can't take it. And I reach the job and the man in charge of the job telling me I might lose the job. But if I lie down on my back, I might keep it for a week. Massa, I can't take a next lash. This is Trinidad and Tobago where we do not care about our people. Where this is a story for a lot of people. There are plenty of little boys outside there selling weed and selling drugs and carrying guns, looking to do robbery. Because if they don't do it, the people in their community will kill them. You have no choice if you're living in that community. Be in the gang or you're dead. And you had to be in some gang because you had to pass somewhere. And all of this is a reality for a large cross-section of our people. And our people have not yet found the ability to talk to one another. You're living in a failed community. Everybody catching ass 
duck him chin, because chin want to know where the money, because you're signing on brown paper for rice and corn beef to feed your churn and flour to make pap. And now you're owing chin, you're looking for a next door to get all credit from, because you can't pay a bill. Trinidad and Tobago does not have to have people that poor. Today I had to speak with a woman, middle class, Glenco, catching her tail to, to, to take care of her family and pay her bills, make ends meet. It's not just the lowest classes now. That story I just tell you, they have men and women tonight in West Morins and Glencoe and Bayshore, in, 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 in Valsane, in, in, down in Gulfview. They can't sleep tonight. Formerly, middle class people, they can't sleep because they, the business closed down or it closing down or the size of the overdraft they can't come out. They can't come out from under it. They need foreign exchange to be able to import to sell and they can't get it. And the Chinese man telling them is 10 to 1. The bank only offering you 200 US. So you're thinking, how the frig I buying US at 10 to 1, importing this shit and selling it and still being able to compete with Francis Fashion Shoelocker? Because I can't. And my business closing down. So I can't even tell my wife. I can't sleep tonight because at some point, this bank manager who used to be in our house three, four times a year for dinner, he had taken the calls because they know I call in the bag and they are not me to do. My loan, my credit, my overdraft, he can't help me. I'm underwater. The debt is greater than the equity and the next conversation we have is about friend, you know you had to move out. We, we know each other too long. Don't let me come and put all your belongings in the street. Now for a lot of people who work in Petrotrain, who have been hearing me and laughing and joking, what wrong with you? What wrong with you? Can't get a walk? Can't get here walking in the day? Why you talking so much? Now they messaging me, oh God, Philip. Philip, Philip, oh God, Philip, again, every time, if I don't turn on my Facebook or my WhatsApp, and I come back at it a half hour later, 50 messages, and 49 is begging for help. People sending me all kind of requests for help. Help me, oh God, help me. Help me, I can't do this, I can't get that. My child, my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, let me tell all you something. The only help I could give is to organize political representation for this country and fix it for everybody. Not because you know my name or you could find me or you know my phone number. Somehow it means that I could go above and beyond for you. The only thing that I could do for Trinidad and Tobago is organize it comprehensively. We could fix it for all so that every single person in this country could have hope and opportunity and we could share the bounty of Trinidad and Tobago equally, equitably with everybody. That is the only thing that I could do. But I cannot do it if you continue to sit on your ass waiting for Massa or, Ma or, or Messiah to come along and save you. Because all you're doing is delaying the inevitable, wasting your time and putting yourself and your family at risk to incredible misfortune. The poor people suffering in Trinidad and Tobago, them learn, you know, when you talk to them and they're here, Charlie down the road catch a big fish, everybody looking to see what they have they could barter with, you know. One man bring rice, next man bring seasoning. Everybody looking to take a piece of fish home. Trinidad and Tobago does not have to be that way. The pitch lake alone should have us rich. The oil coming out the ground alone is 40,000 barrels a day by 76 US dollars a day is $7 billion a year in oil. So if you mothball the refinery, we're still getting $7 billion out of the ground. And between that and the pitch lake, Trinidad and Tobago is supposed to live nice. And we're supposed to diversify the economy, end the bullshit about wasting foreign exchange on Hadco and Amco and Massey to import food. We should be growing 90% of the food we consume, but you're bullshitting the nation. And Kamala had five years and she ain't grow a stick. So don't give me the bullshit about the UNC's option. The UNC, if the, the somebody tell me if the, if the UNC is the answer, the question is what is the cause of a heart attack? Trinidad and Tobago, if you do not wake up to your reality, and I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy. It's getting worse every day. They're taken by bulk and go. 
They take it by bulk and go away and get to all kind of people. The Chinese done half own. We are ready. We in bulk to all kind of people. And I watch it. Little political ma mavericks and miscreants who want to fling the dick at a friggin' political party. Listen, form something. Don't just wake up in the morning to mark my time. Don't be watching what I'm doing with myself. Don't be coming to you all oh, give me. <laughs> Some of these political wannabes give Philip Edward Alexander, who has no public office, more of their attention than all of the jackasses actually destroying Trinidad and Tobago being paid big money to do it. Hey, as I say, I ain't running down no office. I tell all of this already. And that's why I talk so plain. If you're taking me, you're taking me as I am. Because I tell you, I'm coming straight at every step of the way. If I am your prime minister I'm talking like this, I talking to you just so. I am I will always be a bullshit free zone. I promise you to be fair. The, the, I have an overdeveloped norm of reciprocity. I hate injustice. I would like to live in a world where all of us could share equally, where everybody, children from Goodwood Park to West Monster, beat them. All of them children have the same chances at a good life. That's what I want. I could go to the I could go to my reward after that, even if it's cockroach and worm for eternity. I don't mind. I would have felt that I have lived a good life. I do not have any interest in battling political sycophants and trolls for the pleasure. My role in Trinidad and Tobago is to help you change the narrative. The conversation starts and ends with you. We are in a dangerous place, dark and murky waters. Your government has gone rogue. This plan to shut down Petrotrend is a, is a volatile, violent act. We cannot stand by and let this happen. If you think for one reason, for one second, that the shutdown of Petrotrend is not going to affect you, it's like the jackass who say, the earthquake didn't affect me, but the tsunami it caused come and wash him away and drown him. We are in an interconnected society. And if we don't stand together, if we don't stand together, the country in trouble. The country in trouble. Yeah. stunt artists and circus troops have been lying to you for 56 years. Chantal Mondi, a friend of mine, she had one foot in the politics and one foot want to leave Trinidad and Tobago and I don't blame her. Chantal opened Trinidad and Tobago's first exclusive boutique in Long Circular Mall and ended up going out of business. A national institution to a lot of people. Women dressed granny, mommy, and daughter in that store. And it gone. Chantal is my friend. And I want to encourage Chantal to bet everything on Trinidad and Tobago, but it is not my decision to make. It is not my decision to make. It is hers. But I want to, I want to, I want to encourage her and everybody like her. Tell your children, tell your family, listen, we have to stand for this country. To all my friends, to all the people who have escaped the madness of Trinidad and Tobago, you've left family behind. There are friends of yours in this madness who are about to lose everything and hope is dying in Trinidad and Tobago. I need you to help us stay where you are. Only come home when it's time to vote. But we need financial assistance to build this movement. 
We need it. I don't need it for a salary. I good. But we need it to build this movement. We need the opportunity to give Trinidad and Tobago a real and credible opportunity. All of you all have to share these videos because Sabga News Network and Massy Media not giving me and the Progressive Empowerment Party a chance to bring the message to the people. You all have to take this information one to the other. I know a man in Lavantil does take this video and play it on his car loudspeaker so others could hear and just gather around. And the man says, boy, you're like a light in a dark pit. Trinidad and Tobago, the only reason I am doing this is because I am you. I am one of you. They want to pretend and send Uncle Tom's. They want to send Judas's among us for 30 pieces of silver to come and say, this one is this and that one is that. Stop the division. We are one people, regardless of race, class, height, weight, whatever social division. Whoever you lying down with or praying to at night, I don't care. We are one people, and the day 1.4 million of us stand together as the 99% in this country, they never try that shit they try trying now. But it is up to you. I am doing my part. I tell you, play. I've been doing this for over 10 years. There's a lot of work went into creating this political party. Our policies, plans, programs, and ideas are second to none. The PNM and UNC trying to find all kind of way to thief it and rewrite it, to pass it off as theirs. This is a real political vehicle. We may not have deep pocket finances on questionable money fooling you with bullshit. We come and play, you know, we're talking straight. You want a better children in Tobago? The, it is in your hands. It is entirely in your hands. Regardless of long weekend, short weekend, regardless of what you think is your current situation, I want Trinidadians and Tobagonians to start to develop the habit of looking down the road. Check your money, check your income, check your savings, check your job or your business. See how safe and secure it is. Prices going up all around you. Can you sustain? Will you survive? Should you be wasting money living a life of wild abandon right now in a country where people are falling at your left and at your right? I want you to give a thought to not just your today, but your tomorrow. I want you to think. And if you feel for one second that you are at risk, come to Stanmore Avenue this Saturday at noon. We are there every Saturday and we are building out a massive political vehicle, a real answer to the bullshit that has passed as government to the PNM and the UNC for 56 years. If you want a better nation, this Saturday at noon, join us at 19 Stanmore Avenue. If it is that who you're voting, maybe or not. Alexander. 
just bringing something forward. Since you have the courage to voice what people are thinking, the residents who are being displaced due to the QREP overpass were offered below market value for their property. When they turned it down, the government then served 15 days eviction notices. You want to defend it? Come and join a growing mass of Trini humanity that will stand with you. You can't sit down home and send a message. If you want to be a part of change and leverage the Progressive Empowerment Party, this Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue. <laughs>
and share this. As we are about to celebrate 56 years of independence, we need to consider the effect of the shutdown sale, abuse, and mismanagement of those industries that have played an integral part in allowing us to achieve independent nation status. As we reflect on the journey over the years with the advancements in education as intelligent people, one must consider that while change is unavoidable, has it led us to being better off? As time goes by, we expect to learn from past mistakes to become better than we were before. Have our living standards improved? Do we feel a sense of security and value in our nation? Do we feel included in the decisions being made and executed? Are we self-reliant? Now consider the definition of independence. Determine for yourself, free from ignorance, arrogance, and political allegiance. Do we truly have something to celebrate? You decide. Well said, Lorena Jaikaran. Trinidad natural gas deal with Venezuela raises U.S. sanctions. Trinidad, the recently signed agreement between the governments of Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago for the exploitation, transfer, and the sale of natural gas reserves located in Venezuela's Dragon Field has raised questions as to the implications of current U.S. sanctions. The deal, details of which have been kept secret, will allow Trinidad and Tobago to access gas through a direct line from Venezuela to a joint venture between energy giant Shell, the Venezuelan state-owned Petrolas de Venezuela, and local company NGC, which will create the infrastructure to be structured through a special purpose vehicle to be formed and owned by PDVSA, Shell, and NGC. Shell's pipelines will be used to transport the Dragon Field to the Hibiscus platform of the northwest coast of Trinidad. The Hibiscus platform is jointly owned by the Trinidad Tobago government and Shell. Many of the reports of the Dragon Agre Agreement refer to cheap energy for Trinidad Tobago. However, current U.S. Treasury Department sanctions imposed on Venezuela by Executive Order 13835, dated May 21, 2018, among other things, prohibit transactions by a U.S. person or within the U.S. related to the sale, transfer, assignment, or pledging as collateral by the government of Venezuela of any equity interest in any entity in which it has a 50% or greater ownership interest. Further, any transaction that evades or avoids has the purpose of evading or avoiding, causes a violation of or attempts to violate any of the prohibitions set forth in the order is itself prohibited. Any conspiracy formed to violate any of the prohibitions set forth in the order are also prohibited. According to the U.S. Treasury Department Executive Order 13835, closes another avenue for corruption by denying the Venezuelan regime the ability to earn money by selling off public assets at fire sale prices at the expense of the Venezuelan people. In the absence of any detail, it is not known if the new agreement is an attempt to bypass U.S. sanctions and designed to avoid the U.S. banking system entirely, not an easy task in the energy industry. The news has asked the Treasury Department if it is aware of the agreement in questions and its terms. If so, is it satisfied that it does not infringe the provision of Executive Order 13835 and or any other applicable sanctions? Or does it in fact represent a prohibited sale of equity by Venezuela at a fire sale price at the expense of the people? In the meantime, within our framework, the Shell pipeline could be a cause for concern. The United States of America is reviewing the deal signed by Keith Rowley, the secret deal. In Cancel the super fast Galatia. Since then, we've spent renting two barges, $14 million. The Ocean Flower, $20 million. The Cabo Star, 
78 million dollars. Purchasing the Galleon's Passage, 114 million dollars for a grand total of 252 million. Had we kept the super fast Galatia to rent it for the next five years, would have only cost us 195 million dollars. <laughs> set up to do the sea bridge what was the name of that company all remember that they sent mark Bazan to miami to research it and they had no office and it was all of a big lie that it never existed it was just pnm finances trying to hoodwink and fool the people what happened to that investigation that they hired christian muti a one percenter he alone where was that report you'll remember that what happened to av oil and the hundred million dollars in fake oil that gone what is going on Trinidad and Tobago? Do not lose sight. We are being plundered and pillaged. Trinidad and Tobago, it is time to wake up. This Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue. Bring all your friends. Bring all your family. Jump in the car. Jump on your bicycle. Ride your bicycle if you have to. Come down. This Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue. Let us begin the process of rescuing our country. If it is that injustice. justice. It is time for the people of Trinidad and Tobago that had a government that made this country functional. This is a tiny dot in the ocean. Trinidad and Tobago's police service could be cleaned up in six months. We could secure the nation's borders and end the drug trade and the illegal arms. We could put a proper professional motivated and incentivized police service to clean up all the guns and give them a thousand dollars bonus for every firearm that they bring in to be recorded, registered, and reduced to scrap metal. Trinidad and Tobago could have one of the best education systems in the world in two years, healthcare system in five years, make ourselves food self-sufficient on the road in the first five to 10 years. Trinidad and Tobago could boast as being one of the most blessed and prosperous nation in the entire world in quick time. We cannot get there by voting charlatans and bandits and the oligarchs that control them into office. We need to stop it. We need to end it. The journey to a better Trinidad
Trinidad and Tobago starts today. We meet this Saturday at 19th Stanmore Avenue. Mark your calendar. Put it in your phone. Cancel your plans. Change whatever you had booked to go to. Make sure you have a babysitter or bring the children. We meet in this Saturday at no 19th Stanmore Avenue. Let us stand up for a better country. If you need more information, the numbers are 347-4PEP. We have a website, peptt.com. We have a pep app, PEP, APP. It's a pep app. Two words available on all the app stores. It's free of charge. It's yours. Peptrinbago at gmail.com is our primary email address. And if you forget all of that, message me and I will make sure that you get on to the right person. We need your assistance. We need your help. We need your vote. We need your finance. We don't want to be on OM deep pocket finances and after the election they come and take away the whole country. Vote a government into office that will go after every single deal ever made since 1962. You want justice? You want a better nation? You want a treasury full and people eating well and watering your taps and, and a hospital? A, a, a healthcare system that when you take your mother, your father, your child is a real healthcare system. You want to make sure that when your children go into school every day, that the teachers actually there and they actually teaching. Vote a government into office that has that as its primary role. We believe that the well-being of every single citizen is the function, reason, and purpose for government. If you want that too, if you want a better Trinidad and Tobago, share this video and come and join us this Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue. Stay safe, Trinidad and Tobago.